Hi, my name is Peter Woodbury. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I wanted to take this opportunity to announce that I'm doing an online course starting March 1st. It's a four-week course uh, to this year, 2019. And uh, here's a little intro video about it. And um, you'll find the uh, link to my website if you are more interested or if you want to, uh, to actually uh, take the course. It's at peterwoodbury.com forward slash courses. It's many lives, one source, understanding reincarnation, karma, grace, and your place in the divine plan. It's one of my favorite programs, and so I hope uh, to see you there. There'll be four lectures, and with each lecture, I'll be guiding a meditation or a self-hypnosis recording that you'll be listening to and uh, working with. And then I look forward to hearing your feedback on the kind of a wall where you'll be able to uh, kind of write down your thoughts, experiences, and we'll have a dialogue that way. All right, so let's, uh, let's continue. So a little bit about uh, myself. Edgar Cayce says we choose our parents. So he, here are the two lovely people that I chose to be my parents. Um, I'm the one in the middle, in case you were wondering. And so what did I choose with my parents? Uh, both my parents were Catholics. They were both psychiatrists. And they both had an interest in metaphysics. And that interest in metaphysics came largely from the beautiful woman in the center of this picture, my great-grandmother. In today's language, she would have been called a medium. She's from Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico, she was called an espiritista. She had a, a relationship, communication with people on the other side. And so she was 100 when I was born. And so she was more like my grandmother. My grandmother is there on the left. She passed away when I was about two. In the middle behind Doña Chere is my mother. On the right is my Aunt Betty. It's her wedding day. And then my two sisters on the left, Margarita, and on the right, Camille. And I guess that's uh, me taking the picture. Now, the three main influences in my life, I would have to say, are uh, Edgar Cayce, Carl Jung, and Paramahansa Yogananda. And the biggest debt of gratitude that I owe to Edgar Cayce is how he was able to bring uh, Jesus, in some way you could say resurrect Jesus in my heart and mind. I was raised uh, Catholic, as I mentioned earlier, and I felt a deep connection with Jesus growing up. But uh, as with many people, education replaced science with, uh, for my spirituality. And it was through the work of Edgar Cayce that I was largely able to come back to understanding this great soul and the role of this soul in our, uh, our evolution. And I'll be talking more about that in the course. Now this is a quote from Yogananda. Some of you know him, some of you may not. In this quote, he wrote a lot about the Christ consciousness. And here he's talking about Jesus wanting not us not for us to build so much temples on the outside but temples on the inside and to move away from churchianity but to seek direct contact with our creator within and um, i teach now i teach regression and hypnosis and hypnotherapy at the are this will be the third year i'll be teaching it in the fall in october and so some of you I know have registered for the class. I basically teach what I've learned to do. Edgar Cayce would go into a deep trance state and he was able to access, I would say, his deeper soul mind or the mind of God. And um, the work that I do is in a way to help people give readings for themselves. And so I teach that uh, once a year at the ARE. Now, uh, Edgar Cayce talked a lot about the Christ consciousness. And here's the definition of that. It's a pattern imprinted on the mind, awaiting to be awakened by the will of the soul's oneness with God or creative forces. Now, if you notice, there's no one's name here. Jesus' name is not here, Muhammad, Buddha, Lao Tzu, Confucius. There's no name. So this is a pattern that Edgar Cayce says is within all of us. Every human who's ever lived and ever will 
live has this pattern imprinted on their mind because we are in essence souls. And as we've come into the earth, we've just gotten more and more distant from our, the consciousness of our oneness and we've come into the consciousness of separateness. And so this Christ awakening uh, anointed consciousness is about remembering, coming back to a oneness place. Now in Casey's view, he said that the example of this pattern, if, if we were to act, if a human being was to act according to awakening this pattern, they would look a lot like Jesus, that that's what it would look like. Maybe a lot also like Buddha and other great teachers, and Casey was a devout Christian, so there's a lot about Jesus in his material. But I like to share this because this is not about Jesus. Jesus was the man and this consciousness was the pattern that he was awakening and following. And so as Christians sometimes we wonder, you know, that no one gets to the Father but through me. This is the me. It's not through Jesus. It's through awakening this pattern. Now here's a quote from Carl Jung that I reference often and it could be from Edgar Cayce. He uses different words. But the purpose of life is to move the center of identity from the ego to the self. Casey would just use the word from the personality to the individuality, which means to move your consciousness from this finite being that we experience here on the world to the eternal part of us. So when we say, I am Peter, or you say, I am your name, moving your identity from Peter to the I am, because the I am is the, is the God eternal part of us. And one point in the past you were saying, I am Ragangana. In the future you'll say, I am Rishnakar, whatever, you know, the, the I am is your eternal self. And so when you say, I am Peter, am I identifying more and more with my I am consciousness? So in week one of this course, we'll be looking at our cosmic origins, basically Edgar Cayce's creation story. I think it's very important to get in touch with our origins, cultures that lose their creation mythology, suffer greatly because of that. So I'd like to begin with that and get us in touch with where we come from and how we got here. Kind of each of us wake up in the middle of a movie or we start a book in the middle of the book and so that's why it's a little bit confusing. Perhaps it's chapter 492. Well what I'd like to do at the beginning is to kind of explain the beginning of the movie or the beginning of the book. In week two, we'll begin looking at spiritual law, the basic law of loving God above all else and your neighbor as yourself. As a Catholic, I struggled with this predominance of why do we have to love God? Why do we have to worship God? Is that a self-centered, narcissistic God with an ego problem, or, you know, low self-esteem, or is there more to the story? In week three, we'll be looking at karma and grace and forgiveness. And this is probably going to be the longest lecture of the course. It's going to be the most in-depth. We'll be looking at the complexities of karma, not just the law of reaping what you sow, but much, much more. Casey says karma is soul memory. I would add that it's unconscious soul memory. And grace is largely the way that we work through karma. And all the great teachers have come to teach us compassion, forgiveness, and forgetting. So that's what we'll be focusing on in week three. In the final week, we'll be looking at these times that we live in, the transition times between the Piscean Age to the Aquarian Age, and kind of what are the calls of this time? What are, the, what are we moving from towards? What, are, what gives us hope? What are the uh, es essential elements of this great age to come? and understanding the period of testing from 1958 to 1998, and explore some of what's to come, the period of 1998 to 2038. Both of those 40-year periods are very, very important. And once again, there'll be a recording, a tape, or a, a kind of um, guided meditation, self-hypnosis with each of these courses, with each of these classes, so that you'll get a chance to experiment and learn, actually, Edgar Cayce's work is big on application. And so that's what I'm hoping for, that you get an actual experience with some of what we talk about, not just intellectually, but on the deeper, perhaps even subconscious levels. And if you'd like to reach me before the course starts, go ahead and email me at peter.woodbury at edgarcasey.org. And I would be very happy to have a dialogue with you. So I'm very much looking forward to this course 
and I hope you sign up and just let me know if you have any questions and I'll hear from you and be in touch soon. Bye-bye.